All right, everybody. How's it going? My name is Mike Schorsch. Um, I'd like to uh, give a little presentation about an aquarium drip feed system uh, that I put in. Um, basically, the goal of this entire system is to take very hard water out of my tap and make it very uh, soft water suitable for keeping uh, fish in an Amazonian biotope. And uh, this is how I did it. First off, a statement of what I'm trying to do. One, I'm trying to obtain a source of suitable water for this Amazonian biotope, and I'm trying to connect that source to an automatic water exchange or a drip feed system. And what I've got is that my existing source water is very hard with a high alkalinity. So in order to get my source water uh, suitable for what I'm trying to do, I'm going to use an AquaFX Dolphin RO unit uh, with a pretreatment, and that is uh, an ion exchange water softener, just like any residential water softener. Uh, the reason for that is the RO systems work much better um, in filtering out sodium. They're much more effective. It's much easier on the membrane rather than just running the calcium and magnesium right out of the, the raw water. Um, so that is the purpose of that. Uh, now, in doing that with an automatic drip feed system, what I discovered is that the RO unit cannot be throttled. I cannot turn it up and down. Um, I, I can control that technically, but the wastewater, the reject water, which is constantly uh, washing the uh, uh, RO membrane, will never stop. So it would be a huge waste of water to do it that way. Um, and also, the RO water that's coming out is technically too, too pure. It needs to be cut back with raw or unconditioned well water in order to be suitable for my fish and plants. So, the solution that I came up with this is to batch my RO water and my raw water. I've got basically four reservoirs that I've got to deal with. I've got a reverse osmosis reservoir, a raw water reservoir, so that's raw well water, uh, a mixing reservoir where I, I batch those two together and mix them together for the, the fish tank use, and then I'll drip that into a sump with an overflow. And the sump is just like any other sump that you'd want to do. Those, that, those of you that have sumps, you can use them. Uh, you can stick all your equipment in there. You have more effective filtration. Um, kind of a cool tool, actually. This is a little schematic of the system. Up here, I've got my batching reservoirs. This is reverse osmosis and then the raw. And they'll come together and go down into the mixing reservoir. Out of that mixing reservoir, I'll have a drip system, which I have metered to the sump, and the sump is just like any other sump. I've got a pump to the tank and a return from the tank. And then also because it's constantly dripping, I've, I've got a little overflow in there so that that drip, um, which is, I guess, technically the used water or the old water, uh, just overflows to the drain. Okay, so what is this batch reservoir? What, what makes this uh, especially special? Um, the anatomy of the batch reservoir, I've got a tank, and in this case I'm using five gallon buckets to do the job. I've got a feed, in this case I've labeled it from the reverse osmosis system with an automatic shutoff valve. Uh, the automatic shutoff is required when I use a float valve. So this float valve, when this tank, the water level fills up, the float valve will shut off the, uh, the feed water, and then the automatic shutoff valve will in turn shut down the RO system so that the, the wastewater um, or the brine water uh, will stop flowing as well and, and I can solve that problem. Also in here I've got something that the aquarium people might uh, have never seen before. Uh, it's called a bell siphon. And that bell siphon is what I use to drain this reservoir when I want it to fill up the, mi the mixing tank. Then at the bottom I've got it labeled here, a little bulkhead and then there's the drain to the mix. Okay, so bell siphon. What are we talking about here? Okay, It's used a lot in aquaponics. I've, I found uh, quite a few uh, YouTube feeds um, with uh, aquaponics and people using bell siphons to make this happen. It's They refer to it as an automatic siphon, but there, there really is no such thing as an automatic siphon. Like any other siphon, you have to prime it somehow. But this one is a little bit unique because it is easy to prime. And, uh, and, and it's really very well suited for this application. Um, the anatomy of this, there's a central riser tube, which in this case, what I'm using is three quarter inch PVC. And then I've got a bell that goes over the top and 
that bell has got a cap on it, so that's sealed up tightly. And uh, I'm using inch and a half PVC. And then I've got a little bit of a gap at the bottom, the bottom of the bell, and then there's a bulkhead, and that's the bottom of the tank, and then the drain on out. And the way this works is that the water in the surrounding tank, as it fills, it'll rise up to this level. And once you get up to the top of the riser tube, that's what controls the height of the water in the tank. And if you continue to fill, what happens is the water is filling up inside this bell tube, it'll spill over inside the riser tube. And if the flow is high enough, or the geometry is collect, correct, what will happen is that inrush of water will form an airlock and that airlock will start gulping air down with it and that will force the water to rise up again and uh, it will basically prime itself and then off you go. And then in the surrounding area the, uh, the water level will uh, come on down as the bell siphon operates and then when it hits the bottom of the bell or any opening that you've got it cut in there, the aqu aquaponics people, some of them install what they call snorkels um, to break the, the siphon. Um, the siphon will break and the, the bell siphon will stop operating. So by adjusting the float valve to fill just below the riser, just a minor addition of water will start the siphon. So it's basically primed, ready to go. All I have to do is throw in just a little bit more water and it'll start the siphon. And the length of the bell controls how much the reservoir is drawn down. So in my case, I'm using two five gallon buckets. In that case, it's very easy. The RO and the raw water reservoirs have bells cut to different lengths and this controls the ratio in which I'm mixing it. So I've solved the problem. I've got a source of RO water which is going to work out well for me and I can control the ratio at which they're mixed so I've got water all of a sudden that is suitable for um, uh, for my aquarium. So that begs the next question as I turn the page. But wait, how do we start this siphon? What I've done is in the mixing reservoir I've installed a fountain pump and that uh, basically uh, injects water up into the batching reservoirs and it starts the siphons. And uh, I put that note in there. I think this is very clever. Uh, now, some of you may say, okay, what I'm doing is I'm putting mixed water back into the batching reservoirs. And uh, you can run the math. You can run scenarios if you'd like to prove it to yourself. But basically, I am filling those reservoirs with uh, uh, a measured amount of water. And that water's got no place to go except into the mixing reservoir and um, and then finally into the aquarium. So the, the, the cut of those bells, if, it doesn't matter if I use mixed water to start those siphons. Um, the ratio, provided that you don't fiddle with it, um, will uh, eventually settle out and be the correct ratio uh, as you define by the bell siphons. All right, the next step, now once the water is in the mixing uh, tank, what I do is I do a drip feed so I've got a bulkhead fitting to a throttling valve and it's just a little brass ball valve that I'm using. Um, and a small capacitor rotometer, which I got off of eBay, it's a key instrument, so I'll show it to you here in a minute. But this is a schematic of what it looks like. We've got flow coming in and then the flow goes up in an inner cavity inside the rotometer and then it flows out and there's a little float inside here. So as the flow picks up, then the float will rise and you can adjust your throttling valve to, to get the um, uh, the flow that you'd like. So how do I hold trigger this contraption? Well right now I'm building uh, the, the trigger. It's an electronic trigger, having a lot of fun learning electronics and transistors and so on and so forth. And I, what I'm building is a series of low level switches and siphon switches which will turn the pumps on and off. Um, I'll post a video on that just as soon as it's done. Um, it's going to be kind of a, a cool little system. But right now I'm triggering it manually, and it's, it's, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, if you feed your fish every day, then, you know, that actually gets it done. But anyway, some issues and tips before I actually show you the system. Uh, first off, bulkhead fittings. Uh, you can go online and you can find a bulkhead fitting, but what I would recommend is that you look at using uh, gray PVC conduit. Uh, male and female and then you buy a gasket for that and the reason for that is that when you thread together a male and a female uh, conduit it's designed to thread together all the way so that makes it an ideal bulkhead fitting if you use just regular plumbing PVC for that 
um, those threads are designed to lock together and not necessarily go all the way shoulder to shoulder. So um, the gray PVC uh, electrical conduit fittings work out really well. And then uh, for the slip joints, that they're compatible with normal um, white PVC plumbing uh, drain waste vent PVC that you'd probably be used to using. Um, also, the automatic shutoff. Um, I learned this the hard way. The automatic shutoff must have a check valve uh, in it. If the check valve does not exist between um, um, in front of the automatic shutoff, what will happen is that pressure will back up. When, when, uh, when the float valve shuts it off, the, the pressure will bleed back through the RO membrane. And what will happen is the pressure will bounce and the rinse water or the reject water will never really shut off and you'll have kind of a weirdly oscillating system and it's not going to do what it wants to do. If you install a check valve, that pressure will hold and it will hold the check valve closed or the automatic shut valve, shut off valve closed uh, until the float valve sinks and then there's the call for water, the check valve opens and, and the operation of the RO resumes. Also the reducer and the bell siphon, um, the aquaponics people are, are are, are kind of crazy about this and I do engineering and ironically I do water distribution engineering um, so I know a little bit when you have a device especially when you're asking a device to work off of system pressure you know you don't have an external source of power like an electrical feed when you're asking it to run off of the line pressure which is essentially what we're doing with with a bell siphon you have limited range ability um, if you want a bell siphon to start very easily, you can do that using a, uh, a reducing fitting in there to force that airlock. What that'll do though is that'll reduce your overall capacity. So you're kind of robbing Peter to pay Paul. There's no such thing as a, as a miracle device here. And, and that's just the way that it is. But I would definitely recommend putting a reducer in a bell siphon. Basically, I just used a threaded fitting um, down to, I believe it was a half inch because it's got a, a right angle shoulder in there. So then when that water lands on that shoulder, it splashes and it forms an airlock uh, very quickly. And then lastly, um, quick connect fittings. Um, quick connect fittings, I was kind of skeptical about using them. And uh, once I started using, using them, they were awesome. So easy to work with, they sealed up every time. Um, there's no reason at all to be leery about using quick connect fittings. The only issue that you may have is um, you may have difficulty actually finding all the ones that you need at your local hardware store. Um, you know, where I live, we're dealing with like Lowe's and Home Depot. We've got a couple Menards around. Um, and they don't have a huge wide variety of those fittings. So kind of mixing and matching those fittings could be uh, a little bit difficult for you. Um, if you prefer to use the internet and, and really good at developing parts lists, um, you can go online and, and find that stuff right off the bat. Um, a couple other uh, resources that I think are phenomenal. Um, Aqua Effects. When I first started looking at the RO units, um, you know, I was drawn to, to the performance and the features and the price, obviously, um, of the, uh, the Aqua Effects products. And, uh, you know, obviously I had questions. I was trying to get started on that, and I sent uh, quest, um, inquiries to uh, Aqua Effects. And Pre Pete Brizio uh, responded directly to me. And if you see the Aqua Effects YouTubes, uh, you'll see Pete on there. And I, and I just have to tell you, the guy took the time to answer my emails personally. He's a real deal. Uh, he definitely knows his product. So I definitely want to give a good, uh, a big shout out to Aqua Effects and Pete um, out there. Also, US Plastics is a great resource, uh, especially for quick connect fittings. Uh, this is what I'm referring to when you say, or when I say that if you are internet savvy and would rather order your parts online, go to US Plastics. Um, th this site will inspire you to be a, ma a mad scientist. Of course, there might be some off the wall type stuff. The key rotometer uh, that I bought. I retails for something like $120. Uh, I got it at eBay for like less than 50. So you know that's a good place to look for um, you know those sort of specialty things. And then uh, last but not least, and and this doesn't really uh, enter into the the whole batching thing, but this is the pump that I'm using down uh, in the sump. It's a BLDC pump. Uh, I believe the website is bldcpump.com. They're based in China. The uh, um, the instructions come in somewhat broken English, but these are uh, brushless pumps. 
Um, shipping was a breeze. The cost is right. We're running on 24 volt DC, so uh, you can use uh, you go back to eBay. Where is it? eBay, and and just buy um, uh, a DC power source. It'll give you a 24 volt uh, DC. I think I'm using a, a monitor, uh, a computer monitor power source for that. Uh, but they've got great products. And what's phenomenal about BLDC Pump is they actually show pump curves. They've got performance curves um, on all their products on their website, which ironically is something that is kind of difficult to find um, when you're looking at some of the American products. Uh, they do advertise for aquarium stuff, but it seems like most of what they're doing is cooling for PCs. So, you know, you can go off the reservation and, and do some really creative things if you're, if you're willing. Um, you know to, to take that uh, take that stuff. So that's pretty much all that I've got um, as, as far as the description. Let's go look at the system.